My name is Ben Cook and welcome to Anglin Info. Welcome to Anglin Info. And today, we're joining us on a winter session at Thomas Pond. And what I'm going to try and do for you today is sort of teach you different ways of um, catching trout commercially. Now, this is starting to get a bit of a trend among ponds where winter leaves are putting rainbow trout in and it's giving better spot basically for the winter leaves. Um, Thomas Pond is no exception to that, as, as a few more now around this area are doing it as well. So, I know it's unconventional if you're a die hard uh, trout angler, uh, but what I'm going to show you my approach to fishing for them in winter and the different baits and the different um, areas and height levels and rigs that we're going to, we're going to show you today. So, I've picked a nice little place today. Before I go into to great detail about where I'm going to fish and, and how I'm going to approach it, Obviously, I'm set up as if I would be in a match. Um, so what I'm going to do first is get a rig out. I'm going to show you that it's totally do the rig, the elastic, um, in a short in time. And then we'll go on to the bait, and then we'll go on to where about we're going to fish. So, I've got a selection of rigs uh, with me today, and a selection of top kits. Um, but I've only set up three. And the reason, I was going to set up four, but the reason is for both the margins. bank line which are both exactly the same depth as well so that that's the reason makes makes me my two rigs and then the third rig is a shallow rig believe it or not in winter especially when you're fishing for a trout they do come up in the water and you do have to move it around the depth to catch them so the first rig that i'm going to we're going to show you is my edge line now we're fishing in winter so everything needs to be dumbed down in regards to Fishing for average trout down to about a pound, but they can go up to three or four pounds each trout, and there's also a lot of um, F1s and carp in here which may, may or may not show. So, what I've gone is, is for on the margin side, so there's a few snags down there, it's just a number eight um, Jura elastic. <coughs> and that's simply to just give me an extra bit of pulling power um, which I'm getting them out of. So, light, you're not going to bump anything off. Now, the main line for that is 013 recoil power and I've got that all the way down to a hook length of I would say 8 inches and that's with a size 20 Brennan uh, pellet hook and that's um, 012 bottom so it's a very light bottom what you'll find is that you, you just won't get the bite um, if you don't um, the float I'm using today is a little commercial indications uh, chimp float and it's point three. As you can see, what we're going to do is drop it really down so we've got sensitive bite, but to be honest, trout, very violent bite, and um, we don't usually hang about with it. Um, and the shotting pattern, what I've got is, so probably about the first 18 inches I, I've got nothing, and then that goes down to a spread bulk um, of two, number eight, and I've got a selection of three, um, bulk of number number eight again, and then I've got a number 10 dropper just before the hook and that's just to give a little steady, a steady flow. We don't want to be bulleting the bait down. The, the, the trout, they do follow it through the depth, so if we get those liners, we know we, we, we can shout shallow water and our position on the drop. That's just searching the depth with that flow fall, and it, it's just easier to plan your swim, your area, and you sort of get an idea of where the food is. Plus, they're up and down all day, so when it comes to the other shallow, we've, uh, we've got that shallow rig. So let's just put that one back for a second. The next thing that we've got, which you will see in a bit in many colour in, uh, in summer, in winter, sorry, it's usually, it's usually summer that we've got it. There's another, again, another commercial indication, uh, chimp float. Um, again, this is a point three, but we've gone for um, a lighter um, stem on it in coloration so you can't see it in the water. There's only three number eights that need to chop this one, and I've got that right underneath the float, so it just brings that float down straight away. And it's not as gotten as the other one, as it, you know, I've got a couple more shots. And we've just basically got the three line. I always start at probably 18 inches with them when it when they go shallow in winter, and shallow up as needed. And the hook again is a size 20, and it's onto the, the 012 bottom. 13 main lines, so this time it's going to go 14. Um, and the 
last that we've got is a double duck latex number four, Preston. Um, and the reason we've got that is obviously as soon as you hook the fish, you swim away. There's plenty of you know of power in it there to, to handle whatever you're going to catch really in winter up to you know up to the four pound. Um, you know we've got the four tips, but there's side pull kit on these ones in the uh, into elastic, so that's uh, going to be easy to get those in. That's not a problem. And like I said, with a shallow, it's pretty much over all your lines. Um, I'll be feeding uh, number three, like number six, a mixture of number six and number four uh, pellets in, uh, in front of me, and, and just uh, periodically dropping over when I see swirls, basically. Um, but that's again, that's going to feed that that two plus two line on the deck for me to fish over with an expander. The edge lines, um, I will be using expanders as well. But I've also bought uh, when it sometimes it gets harder. I've got a little bit of crumb. Uh, which has just been blended, pressed, added a little bit of water so it gives a cloud and we'll fish a punch over that. So that's something we'll go into later on. So the final rig that we've got is a, again it's going to be on the, um, the number double four uh, latex, uh, pure latex this time through the Preston one and that, again that's doubled up uh, through an into elastic kit. Um, the deepest of the rigs. We've got about two and a half foot uh, to your left and right in the margins, and then it folds out to the middle to a flat, to a flat all the way to the other side. And that's fishing the best part of the lot four, three and a half to four foot. Uh, we've got a bigger float on here for number four, uh, point four, sorry, and that's purely because we've got a little bit of uh, top of the water, which allows you to hold that float steady at distance. Um, so again, we've got a very similar shot in We've got that first 18 inches where it's just nothing at all until we get that um, two sets of bolts of number eight. Um, so we've got five number eights there. And we've got them bolts up in two separate um, two inches apart. And then we've got two two more um, droppers um, about four inches away from that and then another couple of droppers of number eight. And then that leads us down to the hook length of again, size 20, um, 012. Light stuff, but it's, it's just matching what you need for the conditions. So, what I'll do is I'll just grab some bait and we'll sort of show you what we've got with the bait. So, hook bait wise, you can see we've got an expander. So, a lot of people use, <coughs> use the bait pumps um, and, and stuff like that, that's great. All I do is I just soak them in cold water when I get to the peg uh, from pond water and then when you want to use them just grab one, squeeze it underneath the water, let go and it'll sink. Uh, so if you haven't got a pump it's not the end of the world. Today I'm using Ringer's 4.5mm uh, uh, um, pellets. They're just what I find the right thing for this venue. Um, you, you can use sixes if you feel confident with sixes or that venue that you uh, to go to you find that they the want sixes. Um, pellets. So what I've done with the pellets is the micros, two mils, just soak them lightly. So they will boil up, but they're very easy to, to you know, break back down. I've put a very, very light bit of a, a halibut attraction uh, into there, just to, you know, that's what they're reared on, and you know, it gives that that little haze of um, scent in the water, so that you know, the fish can smack into that really quickly. Um, this is uh, the blended um, bread. So as you can see, it's you know it's pulped off. You're only going to be feeding thumbnails of that when you fish the punch. Um, you know, obviously the punch is uh, as normal. Just uh, you're going to do a small formula punch um, of compressed bread, and you can either roll it out or you can compress it with your finger and then punch it. Um, you can have a look at my bread preparation video for that, and also for the um, the, the crumb preparation is also on on that one as well. So what we'll do. So get a better camera angle, and we'll. Uh, I've, I've fed the left and the right with a very, very small amount of, of micro pellets. So what we'll do is we'll, we'll spin round. I'll show you how much we're going to we put in the pot and where we're going to fish. So like I said before, with the with with the expander pellets, you don't you don't have to uh, you don't have to use your um, 
to the pump all the time. You can just use um, cold water or, or pond water. And all you need to do is grab one of your toes and put it under the water. And then what will happen is it will sink. And then all you have to do is put your hook in and then roll it onto your hook's toe. The hook's buried and it's so soft it will. <coughs> the hook will come straight through. Now I find the ringers brilliant. Um, there's lots of different makes out there, Prince Perfect, lots of different makes. Um, uh, it's just find the what's what's best for you. And uh, you know, I, <coughs> I find that the, uh, the ringers are the best for me. So, do be careful when you do with your mouth. In the garden, so, um, I'm going to tell it on. Even though it, it is so stop telling. You still got to be careful. So I'm going to give it a few seconds uh, on this line and change over to the other side. We'll just dip inside this and just see if there's anything. Here. We'll just try and get some early fish. Oh, straight into a fish. Fantastic. Definitely feels like a trout. Ship the pole back nice and steady. Keep it always keep it low. Just using light elastics and light um lines here, so just be careful. Small hook and the uh, trout have teeth as well. So just be very careful when, when playing them. Um all always just keep that keep that tip down when they uh, when they go for a for a run. Once I've got them in the net, what I tend to do is use um, forceps. You can use disgorger, but I find forceps easier as they have teeth, and it's just easier to get a direct um, purchase on the hook so it doesn't um, injure the teeth in any way. Once we've uh, got that done, let's just get them back in the net, try and catch another one. Right, what we're going to do is put a bit of crumb on. So what I've done is I've thrown some of the soft uh, blend, blended crumb in on my short line uh, after fishing the edge and not much has uh, done anything. So I thought when it's usually this hard I like to feed a little bit of crumb. I've had a, most of it sunk uh, as it's obviously soft but there's a little bit float, uh, floated out to the top left corner near the bush and I've seen quite a few fish topping, swirling out there. So what I've done is I've shallowed up to about 12 inches deep. I'm just squeezing on a little uh, red flake. I'm going to get that out there. Uh, and I'm hoping that they've come shallow and they're going to be shallow. Because it's quite probable. Um, even though it is really cold this, year, this time of year. It's, it's a bit bonkers really. But they do go shallow. So they haven't been really taking the pellet today. Which is very unusual. So I'm thinking that bread might just work. So let's just give it a go. Oh, there we go. Well, that's not taken uh, long. That's actually quicker than I uh, than I anticipated. So obviously, just ship your pole back nice and low. Remember, I've got the double four on this one, and uh, obviously, fishing shallow, they, they, they tend to hit it hard, and uh, most likely, like this, just, just like this bite, didn't need uh, any striking whatsoever. Just hit it straight away, ends off. So you just need to. Take your time a little bit more, very light, 
um, set up that we've got on here and uh, just g gently ship the pole back once you get it on this top kit again this one's on the inter elastic kit so you've got that to help you uh, to help you land the fish um, other but other sections with my whisker have, have got um, puller bungs on the match kits but uh, very easy to use these inter elastic kits and uh, once it's uh, sorted we'll just get him straight into the net and uh, we'll get out there there must be quite a few out there so fingers crossed we can have some more Not really touched uh, my head lines uh, or my centre line or my, my far bank line to be honest. Um, what I find out is time in fishing is I still fed them, um, but if you find the method that works and, and, and uh, you know it's consistently catching fish, I've al I always believe that you should never come off fish if you're catching them. So literally, um, I've been catching them from the corner, fishing 12 inch deep, with a little bit of squeezed on uh, bread like so, um, and literally that's, that's, what, that's the depth, I mean it's ridiculous really at this time, um, and I've been getting them very frequently, um, as I'll try and demonstrate for you now, but it's, it's imperative that on these catches the trout, they, move, they do move around a lot, like I said before, so you do need to make sure those other lines are primed just as a backup. Um, because sometimes you, you can catch them all day on one line, or sometimes you know you can catch them for 10 minutes. So well lucky that we've had a, a good spell on here, but I've, I've had the other lines prepped just in case. I need to fall back on them, you see. So just can have another one from now. On, uh, literally, every so often I've been throwing up uh, a small ball, um, probably a ping pong ball size of um, the bread pasting, and just sort of letting it uh, dissipate in that corner. And um, that's it, really. I haven't fished directly over that paste, I'm just sort of coming as an attraction, just keeping up in the top layers. 
and then I've really just been dropping a little piece of bread in and just been working this uh, sort of meter, meter stretch and picking them off from left to right. I do find that it is important to be able to lift the bike there. I do find that it is, it is important to not just it's a bit like dobbing effectively, um, obviously you're dobbing you, you're deeper, but what we're doing is we're making sure that we're trying to cover a little bit of ground, we're not trying to catch them all from one one place, one spot, we're trying to, you know, get the, get them some from the left, some from the right, sort of keep, keep it, it, it clear that line make sure they're not all congregating in one space and take them out of one space. Spread them out a bit, you're less likely to spook them. But like, it's just the drum there, the topping, topping in front as well, so, you know, there's the possibility I could catch them shorter, but, like I said before, I don't like them not feeding fish, um, in, especially in the match would never come up uh, it's not a, a, a roughly a pound or, or bigger a, a chuck well there you go that's it that's it straight away I've dropped the, the pole out there and there's a tiny little bit of bread left on there so you can get them up with that but it's not mine to put a little bit more plate back on so that's literally how quick the bike's been going when you're playing them. You have a tendency left, right, up, down. What you do need to do is lift this the jump and you just keep that tip low. Just uh, make, make sure that you don't put the tip up because when you catch them, when you catch them out, they, they shake their head an awful lot. And that's the uh, that's how that's how they free the hook. A bit bigger fish this time. And that's how, that, um, how they tend to free the hook. Um, when they're shaking the head. Not straight on, just artificially shallow that, so um, with it being such a delicate bait, you just have to keep shaking in and out as well. But it's worth it to catch pretty much almost every cast and come back with a pound or more fish. So, so a little bit of a uh, hassle. What I'll do is try and get, try and get one more, and then what I'll do is uh, get the heat net out here, and uh, see what we've had. So two minutes we've had in. It's not, not fish too much today. It's been really cold in a few hours. It's just showing you my my winter approach. If I can like something really like having a summer session, and this is why I see and a lot of the commercial fisheries are doing this because there's such good fighting fish on like here. The way it is now and they put up a good fight and the feed all the way through winter. And I know I know that there's I know there's people out there and they'll think, oh trout trout food is should be a fly fishing rod and I get that, I totally get that and, and there's there's, a, there's a place for fly fishing and, and, and you know I respect that and I respect the original way of catching them but commercial fishing now is a massive game and all credit to, to uh, people like these that you know innovate and think let's put some 
try and talk to me because it's better than that. It's, it's just better for the sport. People, more people come out, more people fish, you know, and that's what, at the end of the day, that's what it's about, it's about catching fish. And, you know, if, if these people get upset about that, then, I mean, it's up to them. But, let's, uh, let's tackle up. Right, so you can see a good session today. Got a decent uh, amount of trout. Um, best, best part of today was uh, flake, really. I tried uh, all lines, but um, flake really was the best. Um, and to be honest, pellet, pellet didn't do much today. So it just proved that you've got to sort of find the fish. I spent two and a half hour trying to find the fish. Once I found them, we were getting one a chuck. So let's get these back first. Check out his other videos. Uh, join us in Angling Info uh, members group. Plenty of people on there. Get on the members' days. And uh, that one.